Hello and welcome! My name's Riemann, and I like making videos about Paradox Interactive's grand strategy games. My videos will cover a variety of different topics, like in-depth guides, unique and powerful strategies, mod reviews, exploit lists, feats of accomplishment, and commentary on what's going on in the community. If there's one unifying theme in all my videos, it's that I'll always be reading from a pre-written script with gameplay footage I've prepared ahead of time. This allows me to present information to you as efficiently as I can. Time is valuable, and by ditching the slower pace of an off-the-cuff conversation, I can keep things interesting, cover simple topics quickly, or go far more in-depth than I'd normally be able to. Simply put, this will never be a Let's Play channel. There's already tons of great Let's Players out there, and while there have been movements in the status quo for me to produce content like that, if I ever get around to making it, I'll post it on a second channel. All videos on this channel will be focused and to the point. Now, my uploading frequency is unfortunately going to be erratic. These videos take quite a bit of effort to make, and the amount of time I can devote to them can vary by quite a bit. Sometimes I could be able to squeeze out a video per week, while other times I could go for a month or more without posting anything. Because of this, if you're interested in the videos I make, then be sure to subscribe so you can know when I release things. My videos will only cover games and series developed by Paradox, like Europa Universalis, Hearts of Iron, Victoria, Crusader Kings, and Stellaris. You might wonder why I'd limit myself to games from just one company. Well, I've dumped thousands of hours into them, and while I've enjoyed many other games both in grand strategy and in other genres, Paradox Interactive is the only company that makes games I've found it worthwhile to devote dozens of hours to making videos for. These are some of the deepest games ever made, which gives them endless replayability. For example, in EU4 you can expand through conquest, diplo-vassalizing, inheritances, personal unions, threatening war, forming a trade league, colonizing, or establishing tributaries. You can make money through trade, tax, production, colonization, building buildings, developing provinces, tribute, war reparations, and more. All of these different ways of achieving simple goals have benefits and drawbacks, and being able to match the right strategy to the right situation that takes place in a dynamic world is what keeps these games fun and interesting. Now a little bit about me. The first experience I had with Paradox's games was EU3 that I picked up at the tail end of 2007. It wasn't until 2009 that I started playing it heavily, and after that I branched off into all the other series they had. But my favorite series of theirs is still Europa Universalis. I have the most hours in it, and think it has the most meaningful depth and different ways to play of any game out there. My most fun playthrough was a campaign where I formed France as Cyprus. This was way back when culture conversion was much more difficult than it is today, and I felt it was unique to use the fact that Cyprus started with French culture to do a tag formation I hadn't seen before. The run I'm most proud of would be my first world conquest with Ryukyu back in EU3. It was a lot harder back then, and the first time you managed to complete the Three Mountains achievement, it really puts the game in perspective of exactly how much depth it truly has. A fact about me is that I'm a huge fan of anything related to the Roman Empire. Heck, my name Raymond is derived from the myth of the city of Rome's founding. Byzantium is my most played nation, with me having done at least six full campaigns with them. I've done their start through every strategy that's been available, including getting Hungary and Poland as attack dogs, using straits to lock Ottoman troops in Anatolia, using the Scorched Earth trick that existed a while back to confuse them into never attacking, doing an exodus to Riga, and doing a full exodus to the New World. I was so happy when Paradox finally added the decision to form the Roman Empire. For the record, my favorite emperors are Marcus Aurelius and Majorian. The background footage you're seeing in this video is from my most recent campaign where I combine my old Caddo strat with a recent exploit that allows them to retain native advancements to become fairly unstoppable. The country modifiers they get are listed here, and if you want to see how to do this yourself on patch 1.21, check out my exploits video on the little i that should appear in the top right. I'll also put a link in the description for a reddit post where I'll go more into detail about what I did in this game. The main gist of this campaign is that you can form the Roman Empire as either a Christian or a Pagan, and I thought it would be funny to have a Nahuatl Roman Empire. I also stacked all the morale bonuses I could get my hands on, and those, along with the inherent power of this run, made my troops pretty much invincible. I'll let the footage play out a little bit longer so you can see some of that. My name's Riemann, and until next time, thanks for watching.